care about the swamp members. Where is the president's daughter? Die Hard Arcade. Anyone who went to arcades in the mid-90s is sure to remember this game. It not only came in a funky and unique arcade cabinet, but it also stood out as one of the first 3D beat-em-up games ever made. Now, while the Japanese one was called Dynamite Decca and just happened to feature a Bruce Willis look-alike and a plot that was eerily similar, they actually managed to secure the Die Hard license for the US release. So if you're unfamiliar with this game, you can already see it's in full 3D and has a multitude of moves you can pull off. The game is almost like a Virtua Fighter beat-em-up. And it does a lot of things right that I think got missed by later beat-em-up attempts. For one, although the game is in 3D, you can see that it's laid out as a side-view game as far as controls go. And this gives Die Hard Arcade a huge advantage over later games like, you know, Zombie Revenge or its own sequels like Dynamite Cop. The most obvious thing is that you can do additional moves like lower attack moves by holding down and hitting buttons. And this is only possible because hitting down and up doesn't cause the character to face entirely different directions the way it does in later 3D beat-em-up games. You know, another thing is that when you've got these 3D beat-em-ups where you can face any direction like you can in uh, Dynamite Cop or Zombie Revenge, it's essentially a top-down beat-em-up. And you know, they tried that with Akari 3 and it wasn't very fun there. I think oftentimes a side-view style beat-em-up is a lot more fun than a top-view style one. It has that traditional beat-em-up strategy where you're always deciding whether or not you want to move into the enemy's plane. The game gets pretty wacky as you can see. Uh, here I'm fighting people dressed as firemen and the fire truck's also out to get me. Earlier you saw me fighting robots. You know, remember that scene in Die Hard where they fight the robot? Uh, yeah, me neither. And that's not a knock, I actually really like the level of goofiness in this game. The boss enemies in Die Hard Arcade are also quite good, and they're rarely very cheap. They all have their little tricks to beat them, as any good boss does. You know, for instance, on this guy, you want to pace yourself and throw furniture at him to wear him down. You know, attacking him head-on and not being defensive is a good way to, you know, have that happen. And speaking of picking things up, in this game you can pick up almost anything. You can kick ashtrays at people, you can even make a flamethrower if you pick up both a lighter and aerosol can. And the game is just terrific in two-player mode. You know, there's no real slowdown in this game ever which is really remarkable. You know, people say the Saturn can't do 3D, but it does a pretty damn good job in Die Hard Arcade. Sure, it's low resolution, it's blocky, but you know, it doesn't warp a whole lot, it looks pretty solid, animation's good, characters are drawn well. Not only that, but the locations are all really distinct, and you know, they get a lot of variety out of a game that's set in an office building. There's plenty of memorable scenes and fights and locations, and it just doesn't stop. I also really like the grappling for guns element that Die Hard Arcade has. You know, watch here as I run, I tackle this guy with a machine gun as fast as possible. This is a game where you have to be constantly assessing the situation. 
there's also a lot of times in this game where you and the enemies will be unarmed and there'll be a machine gun or something lying on the floor and both you and the enemies are trying to go for it. Just a lot of really tense and exciting situations crop up. And what's great is that that's not really scripted into the game, it's just that the AI and environments really uh, lead to that kind of drama. After every few rooms is a quick time event like the one you see here which does break up the action rather nicely. They're of course quite easy, but if you fail them, you'll have to battle an enemy or two extra. Or maybe you take damage. It just depends on the situation. And speaking of distractions from the main beat-em-up action, Die Hard Arcade also packs in a copy of Deep Scan, a really, really old arcade game by Sega. And you can also play Deep Scan to earn more credits in the main Die Hard Arcade game. It starts you out with about three credits, which I think is enough to beat the game. But if that's not enough, or your second player is blowing through quarters, you know, you can always play Deep Scan for more. So this is all pretty great, but the set and port of the game does have some issues. For one, the cinema scenes load way too much. I mean, watch what happens here. It's open! It's open! Load, 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 load. Yes! <laughs> now, it's also worth mentioning there's a import PS2 version of Die Hard Arcade, Dynamite Decca, which does fix all those issues, and it also has a really cool PS2 quality graphics mode. But other than that minor complaint, you know, Die Hard Arcade on the Saturn is arcade perfect. And that's to be expected because Die Hard Arcade in the arcade ran on Saturn hardware. It ran on a system called the STV, which was Saturn based. So with this version, you know you're getting something really close to the original. You know, it's kind of like when you buy a Naomi based game for Dreamcast or you buy a Triforce based game for GameCube. Part of the fun is, you know, Die Hard Arcade for Saturn is the real deal. So that's Die Hard Arcade, a game that I really recommend if you like beat em up games. I feel that it has the depth and playability that so few games in its genre actually achieve. Okay, well, I'll catch you next time, and be sure to subscribe for more game reviews. Bye.